Hi, everyone. And welcome to this joint webinar today between EBD and SACE Holographic Imaging. We are so happy to have you here today on this topic, Mind the Gap, how to route wound healing assays to get maximum biological relevance and reproducibility. As you know, the study of cell migration and cell mortality is of great importance to understand cell disease. However, with the traditional wound healing or scratch assays, Researchers struggle to set up reproducible experiments or achieve relevant quantitative kinetic data. So this joint webinar, um, we're going to show you a solution how to run wood healing assays that will help you to get more biologically relevant and reproducible data. So my name is Hao Ran Yu. I'm the application specialist at PHI. Today, I will be your host for this webinar. Before introducing our speakers, I would like to start with a few things. This webinar is recorded and uh, you will rec receive the recording after this live event. Also, in your control panel, you see there's a question bar uh, box. So please feel free to ask your questions at any time during the presentations. And we will have our speakers address your questions at the end of the presentations. So with that, I'm super excited to introduce our first speaker, Peggy Binish. She is the head of EBD Academy, and she's going to talk about a new method to set up root pill experiments based on the EBD culture insert. So let's welcome Peggy. Hello, everyone. Thanks, Warren, for the very nice introduction. And thanks for having me. So, first, I would like to tell you anything about wound healing and what's important to know about them. But before I get to that, I would like to introduce EBD as a company to you, just in case you haven't heard about us, which would be a shame, uh, because EBD offers solutions for cellular microscopy and functional cell-based assays. That means our customer with our labware products can make such stunning images as you can see here. And besides any solutions for imaging like Advil, dishes, we also offer a whole toolbox of different designs, very specialized labware designs to address very specific scientific questions like how to cultivate cells under flow to mimic blood vessels, how to do chemotaxis, um, transmigration studies can even be studied. And one of those tools we offer is for studying cell migration. But before I go into detail on that, I would like first to give you an overview over wound healing and migration assays and what to consider and what parameters might be important. Then we go through the experimental workflow using our EBD culture inserts for studying cell culture uh, migration. I give you some application examples. And then in the end, I would like to compare it to a regular traditional scratch assay and show you the difference. All right, so let's start. Why performing wound healing assays? Um, you can answer many questions with it. Um, cell migration speed, you could analyze. Migration wound healing assays are often used as or for drug screening, so high throughput drug screening. You can study cell interaction studies with it, or you can even do 2D invasion assays. I'm going to show you a nice example for that later on. And the principle of cell migration, which is part of wound healing assays, is that you have an open area and cells in 2D, so adherent cells, and you analyze how those cells are migrating towards the open area. And it's, in this example, a collective cell migration, and it's always a mixture of migration, so movement of cells, and proliferation. So you can see this here very nicely in this phase contrast movie, the division D events, so proliferation. And it's cell density driven, meaning the cells are moving towards the open space. And the measure parameter for such an assay is the cell covered area, which is reduced over time. At first we have a very big area and the end it gets smaller. And the idea about migration studies is ideally those are real time experiments, meaning you start and you analyze your cells over a period of time till the end. So you take images over time. And you can see here, 
we made a cell-free area. This is time point zero and we analyzed the cells on the microscope, took images every 20 minutes, 30 minutes, depending on the cell speed, for 24 hours. And then we plotted the data in a graph, cell covered area versus time. And then you get such a nice graph here that, as you might notice, might have only a slope in the middle, but some lag faces at the beginning, at the end. And this is very common, that at the beginning, when you make the wound, no matter if you use a scratch or you have an, a spacer, the cells need some time to start migrating. So you always have a lag phase. And the same goes for the end. The cells closer, um, they get to each other in the cell front. When you have those two cell fronts, as in the image you've seen here, um, the less or the, the more reduced is the speed of the cells. So that means only have a look at this area here in the middle, the slope indicated in the red line. This is the area covering speed. This area covering speed in our example is, it's just an example, 100,000 micrometer, square micrometer per hour. And this value is influenced by the objective lens you use and the magnification. So it's not really comparable what you find in publications or what your neighboring group is maybe doing. So you need a value that is independent of such factors. And you can get it independent by dividing this area covering speed by the height or the width of the image. Since we have a vertical line gap in this case, we divide it by the height of the image. And since we have two cell forms, we divide it by the factor of two because it's two cell phones, you double the speed, you have to divide it by two. And then you get the cell phone velocity. And the cell phone velocity is what you need when studying cell migration, because it is independent of the objective lenses used, independent of magnification, microscopy technique, the gap width, the, how the gap was created, or the orientation of the gap. So it's a standard for wound healing and migration assays and makes your results comparable to what you find in publications. And the cell phone velocity, of course, changes with any changes to your assay. So when you want to study certain drugs or you want to see if cells migrate faster on specific coatings, you will get a changed cell covered area and cell phone velocity, of course. So this was the background information on migration assays. And now I would like to introduce you to a product or a tool that you can perform such migration assays with. EBD offers so-called culture insets, and we have them as two welds, three welds, or four welds. And they are made from biocompatible silicone with a sticky underside. And they come in dishes, multiwell plates, or for self-insertion. And the idea is that the insert itself creates a gap because between those two valves, here you have a spacer. The idea is you see cells in those two valves, let them make a confluent monolayer, that's important, has to be confluent, and then you remove the insert, and then you have two cell populations with a 500 micrometer gap in the middle. And the workflow is quite easy. Here you can see how small the insert is. You fill it up with cell suspension, in this case, 70 microliters, Put it in the incubator because now the cells have to settle, adhere at the bottom, and you have to wait until they're confluent. Because only when they're confluent monolayer, there is no other space left where they could migrate to, only the gap. And the gap is then created by removing the insert very carefully, grab it at, at the end of one of those corners, and fill up the dish with medium, and then it can place it on the microscope for imaging. And as mentioned, it's a real-time experiment. So you have to take images over a certain period of time. And therefore, you need a live cell imaging setup. Here we have one example, a um, small stage top incubator. So this is really just a chamber. But you need some solution for that to take images for a long period of time. If you have slow migrating cells, it might require 24 hours or even longer to get a gap close or to get valid results. Then you can analyze the images and plot the data. So it's really quite straightforward. And here's the example from the beginning. 
once again, those are fibroblasts, and they really move collectively as a front. As yeah, as soldiers, they will uh, work uh, move in a front. They are connected with each other. They're really tight cell cell junctions, and that's why it looks as a front. But there are other cell types like keratinocytes. For example, keratinocytes don't move as a front. They migrate independently from each other. So it's really single cells that migrate into the gap and close the gap over time. So it really depends on what cell types you have, how the results look like. What you can also do very nicely with such a tool is a 2D invasion assay. That means you can place different types of cells into the wells and analyze the differences. For example, here we show MCF10 and MCF7, two cell lines, how they migrate after we move the gap. And it's quite obvious that one of them is much faster than the other. I always find this movie quite scary. It definitely looks like an invasion. So this is just one other example you can do with when having a culture insert, when having two separate wells where you can see different cell types. And now I would like to compare these inserts with a traditional scratch assay. I think scratch assay is something still very commonly used. It's easy to do. Everyone can do it in the lab. You don't need much equipment. Imagine you have a dish and you have seed your cells, have a confront monolayer, and then you get a piper tip and scratch over the monolayer to create a wound or a gap. What happens with a scratch assay often is that some of the extracellular matrix the cells built up before sticks still to the gap. And it also depends on how much strength you apply or force when making the gap. And I think you also know it, sometimes you have good days, sometimes you have bad days, maybe you're angry with your partner or with your colleague, you might apply more force than usual and that will influence your results. Um, because maybe you removed more ECM than in the previous experiment and the ECM inhibits, not inhibits, interferes with the migration. It can make the cells move faster because with ECM residues left, cells might not need to produce their own coating proteins. They just attach to the proteins left and migrate maybe faster. So scratch assays can really induce issues with reproducibility and quantification. You can get inconsistent results. And as a comparison, as proof for my theory, um, one of our customers compared our culture insert here on the left side with the results of a traditional piper tip scratch. And you can see a lot of variance in her experiments. Um, she might have been quite angry with her colleagues often. And therefore, our slide, when you have really a, um, a spacer with a defined width, you get more consistent results with less of the vines. That's my point here. So a few experiments to get standardized results. To sum it up, when with EPD culture insets, I mentioned it already, you get reproducible experiments. It's easy to interpret the data when doing video microscopy, because after sample preparation, you put the dish with the cells in some sort of live cell imaging setup on a microscope, take images over time, and then you analyze the data. And something as a take home message is the cell font velocity is the most valuable output parameter that you can have. But for the end, I would like to address one more point, the live cell imaging. As mentioned, the experiments can take a day, maybe two even. So how to keep the cells healthy on the microscope? And there are different solutions I would just like to mention. If you have a standard microscope, the big ones uh, on your bench or a desk or just a table somewhere in the lab, there are different solutions to keep the cells healthy on those. One would be a big enclosure that keeps the heat. They are around the whole microscope usually with a small chamber on top of the stage for the gas supply and the humidity. And another solution would be a stage top incubator. It's a small chamber on top of um, the stage top that supplies 
CO2 but also keeps the temperature. Here's one example how that might look like. This is the EBD stage top incubation system, it's a really small chamber. And a third possibility is to have a small microscope that you can place into a cell culture, a regular cell culture incubator to keep the cells happy. And this is what you have to take care of, to keep the cells happy doing experiment, to have no outer influences, influence your experiment. It's important to keep the humidity high to prevent evaporation, CO2 to keep and maintain a stable pH, and of course temperature has to be stable to not influence the results that you might get. And with this, I would like to end here and um, looking forward to any questions that might have pop up. Thank you, Peggy, for excellent uh, presentations. Um, yeah, we really, I really enjoyed here how the ABD culture insert can produce a precisely defined gap size between two cell patches and increase the reproducibility of wood healing assays. So before we start with the next presentation, I would like to remind our audience again, please don't hesitate to write your questions in the question box at any time during presentations. Our speakers will answer them at, at the Q&A session at the end. So next, we're going to hear from Lisa, who is the Digital Marketing and Communication Manager at PHI. She's going to talk about how to overcome conventional wound healing drawbacks by running automated, uh, automated and non-invasive wound healing assays with a single cell tracking using the Holo Monitor Lifestyle Imaging System. So let's switch to Lisa now. <laughs> Thank you. It's good to see everyone here online. Um, as Hiran said, I will show you today how to overcome conventional wound healing drawbacks by instead running automated and non-invasive wound healing assays with signal cell tracking using our PHI Holo Monitor Live Cell Imaging System. And this amazing, let's see if it works. Yes, this amazing <laughs> gap closure video here is not only pretty, but it's also full of data. And in addition, its creation was cell friendly. So let's mind the gap and be mindful of our cells at the same time. So what we will cover today is that first we're going to learn about non-invasive lifestyle imaging. And I will talk shortly here about the Holland Monitor technology to answer your questions of how it is cell-friendly and provides biological relevant wound healing results. Second, I will highlight the importance of time in wound healing studies. We will look at different cell behavior data points uh, that you can track during gap closure. And speaking of tracking, how single cell tracking can identify unique cell behavior. Third, I will show you the full workflow, how to time efficiently run a hollow monitor wound healing assay using the EBD culture inserts. I will show you the high content data output and as a bonus, latest real life user examples from publications with hollow monitor. So with that, let's run. So for those of you who have not seen hollow monitor in action before, it is a small live cell analysis tool designed to operate 24 seven inside your standard incubator. Without any cellular labels, markers or stains, it uses digital holography to record images and quantify many aspects of the daily life of a cell. The real time results, both from single cells and cell populations come directly from the cells living their happy undisturbed lives inside the incubator. But Holo Monitor is even more cell friendly than that, and the technology will explain why. So, how does digital holography work? Holo Monitor uses a low intensity laser beam that gets divided into two. One beam passes through our cell sample, and a reference beam travels unhindered through the back of the instrument. So, let's have a closer look to understand how this quantifies but not disturbs living cells. Think of laser light as a wave. The blue horizontal lines here in the image is our light wave front. What happens when light passes through our cells is that it gets slowed down and it gets delayed. This delay in comparison to the reference beam is what is measured. It is called a phase shift. The phase shift is recorded and with the help of sophisticated computer algorithms, it reconstructs the image from the laser pattern in the software. 
So as the light only passes through, there is no energy transfer to the cells. And the low light intensity does not influence them in any way, making it a non-invasive method to image living cells. But the technology does not only allow you to visualize the cells, it also gives you quantitative data on all the cells in the image. In holographic images, there's a sharp contrast between cells and background, making it clear for the holomonitor software to automatically segment the cells. Now, all quantitative information is now stored within this image. So once segmented, you can get a lot of data out from each individual cell, for example, on its morphology or with a sequence of cells, uh, sequence of images, uh, its cell movement um, or its cell fate. This makes it then possible to track every single cell and its behavior in, for example, our wound healing gap closure experiments. Let's look at this video here. And now, as the cell's image is reconstructed in the software, we can also give our research a splash of color without any labels, markers, or stains needed. The color indicating here in this video is the thickness of the cells. And a personal perk of digital holography, or a personal perk of mine, is the possibility to see in 3D what has been going on behind closed incubator doors. Nice. <laughs> So now let's move over to the topic of the importance of time to study unique cell behavior. The results of conventional wound healing approaches are not giving you the full story. Endpoint assays miss out on the real-time data. As an example, in your current setup, you might only take a few images with long intervals over the time of your experiment, for many reasons. You can tell at 24 hours that your gap is closed. However, by these two images, you cannot tell the exact time it closed or how the gap was closed. Was it closed by cell movement, cell proliferation? Did all the cells move as a, as a collective front or were there any forerunner cells? All these questions can be answered using time-lapse imaging. So we can see exactly what happened during those 24 hours. <laughs> we see exactly here and the gap was closed. Now, in a second example, you might already use time-lapse imaging to track your gap closure. As an example here, taking images every five minutes provides you with a more detailed gap closure graph, depicting the gap width decreasing over time. However, this time-lapse setup might still overlook to address the influence of both cell migration and cell proliferation on gap closure. Automatic signal cell tracking will decode this question. And here I've got an example from the Holomonitor software showing here our cell movement plot. I've only selected out of the many cells uh, two, uh, blue one in the uh, top front and the red one in the bottom front. And we can now follow their individual cell behavior over time. So if you look now in the cell movement plot on the left, you can see the blue cell making its way into the gap. And by paying attention back to the video, the red cell is undergoing cell division. With single cell tracking, you can also continue to track the daughter cells uh, when the cell is dividing. So applying single cell tracking to your wound healing assay will decipher how your gap is closed. Now, typical drawbacks of conventional wound healing setups are that you either lose your temporal resolution in endpoint assays, or that the work process is manual, tedious, taking images in short intervals, which in turn, as we all know, will introduce the risk of human errors and reduce reproducibility. But one of the biggest drawbacks is probably that you, what you measure isn't actually what you want to study. In endpoint assays, you will only get information on the migration of cells. That is the distance a cell has traveled between A and B. But often the motility, and that is the actual path the cell has taken to travel the distance between A and B, is what is more interesting to study. Using single cell tracking, you can automatically study cell motility, directness, and get more accurate measures of cell speed. If you're interested, we have a free webinar on single cell tracking available online. So we touched upon the topic of studying individual cell behavior earlier, and here's an example from a publication where the orders used holomonitor tracking to get information about subpopulations and outliers, which can be specifically useful 
when you study, for example, drug effects or drug resistance. In the cell movement graph on the top, you see is a very small group of cells that move faster and a longer distance than all the others. They would go undetected using methods that only give you average cell population results. All right, my final topic of today is how to set up and run a hollow monitor wound healing assay using the BD culture inserts and measure what you want to study. To create a cell-friendly and physiologically relevant environment, cell cultures are kept in incubators, but neither of their cell environment parameters are treated with care. Cells are taken out of the culture incubator for imaging, uh, or the incubator door is often open, causing fluctuation in temperature, oxygen levels, and pH. For experimental results to be relevant and applicable in vivo, the in vitro assay conditions need to be controlled. And therefore, the Holo monitor is designed to get installed and operate directly inside a standard incubator or hypoxia chamber. Now, creating a non-disruptive and efficient wound healing assay workflow will make your results more reliable and also will use up fewer cells, substances, and will require less effort. So as we heard already, you start by preparing the cells using the BD culture inserts. So you have an efficient and consistent way of creating the cell gap. Then for best image quality, we recommend that you use our hollow lids to eliminate any image disturbances caused by surface vibrations and condensation inside the cell culture vessel. Our hololids are designed to fit the EBD standard vessels, 35 millimeter micro dish high, as well as the black 24 micro plate with inserts, as you can see here in the images. So you put your hololids on, place the vessel on its vessel holder, and click it onto the holo monitor motorized stage inside the incubator. It's an easy and straightforward sample preparation. And it continues to stay easy with the assay setup in the software. The Holo Monitor software is designed by biologists like myself for biologists to save hands-on time in assay setups. All our Holo Monitor assays follow this easy three-step setup, and I thought I'd just show you briefly so you can see for yourself. So first you go through some basic setup information, and here as you can see, um, the 35 millimeter micro dish, as well as the 24 well micro plate with the inserts, are added in the software as templates. The second step is that you set your imaging parameters. For example, how long you would like to image. So 24 hours, 48 hours, or however long you want. And how often you would like to image. You can set the intervals to every hour, every 30 minutes, every five minutes if you want to apply signals or tracking. As well, this is the place where you set your capture positions which you would like to image. And many tools here in the software will make it easy for you to find the cell gap for imaging. We have an interactive vessel map, a live holographic phase view of your cells, and the automatic software focus. So the only thing left to do is press start imaging, third step, and you could walk away. Holo Monitor will then automatically capture your quantitative image sequence. And once finished, you can reuse your cell sample for other analysis and therefore save precious cells. And as all information is stored in this captured image, you can reanalyze the image from this wound healing assay with other holo monitor assays to any later point in time. So what do you get out of it? Cell front velocity, as we know, is an important parameter, but you also get automatic and kinetic calculation of gap closure data over time. As well, Holo Monitor gives you, as we've seen already, beautiful timeless videos that show you how cells close the gap. Let's just watch this video. It's always nice watching cells. And as a reminder here, the color is indicating the thickness of the cell. So the dark blue is the background, and the thickest parts is the red, white parts. Also, you can apply single cell tracking for more insights. So you can study individual cell movement and get information on cell speed, migration, directness, but also connected with kinetic morphology measurements. Uh, Holo Monitor gives you actually over 30 different cell morphology features. So let's compare it here um, to conventional setups. 
uh, the hollow monitor assay doesn't require any preparation of the cells, like adding cellular markers. And the imaging is set up in a user-friendly software that guides you through the setup. And as all holo monitor, um, or this, this holo monitor assay is compatible with the EBD culture inserts, creating a cell-free gap is easy. We can all together a reproducible assay um, in a cell-friendly environment. Next, you don't have to move the cells outside the incubator for the duration of the assay. Also, compared to conventional imaging methods, this assay is automatic. You set up the imaging and you could walk away, knowing that your cells are imaged in a non-invasive way. Once the time lapse is completed, the software will identify all cells in the image and creates a segmentation mask, which will separate cells from background. All cells are tracked automatically, which means there is no need to transfer your images to a third party software. Also, Holomonitor software automatically generates a multitude of results for you to explore, while you still have all the raw data available to export for further analysis. And speaking of results, I promised um, some user examples and I've got three here for you today. So let's start with Baron and colleagues who used Holomonitor to study long non-coding RNA influence on movement patterns of medulla blastoma cells. So they set up a wound healing assay for 24 hours imaging every four minutes. And in the right cell movement plot, we see that by using tracking, we saw a different movement pattern for cells with and without the long non-coding RNA. In the left graph, authors show that medulla blastoma cells that lack the long non-coding RNA are less motile, which can be of importance when considering metastasis. Well, a second example here is a paper by Halleswick and colleagues focusing on developing a cell-friendly method where cells are grown in matrigel to create a more physiologically relevant environment. Halleswick and colleagues have shown how to quantify cell behavior morphology, proliferation, migration, and motility using hollow monitor and different concentrations of matrigel. They demonstrated how to quantify initial formation of spheroids in matrigel and introduced a novel method for imaging cell invasion. You will find many beautiful hollow monitor images in this publication. Last but not least, our third example is Zoom and colleagues uh, that have used hollow monitor wound healing assay to determine how human umbilical vein epithelial cells respond to signals from mesenchymal stem cells. The data output here consists of cell speed and cell migration. And with that, let's all sum it up. The hollow monitor wound healing assay is based on a reproducible method to create the gap, coupled with graphics and automated data analysis to provide a gap closure rate. As with all hollow monitor applications, it's self-friendly and based on non-invasive live cell imaging. So you can image your cells in a non-invasive way while not compromising on quantitative data, but circumventing many of the drawbacks with conventional methods. And you increase your productivity by learning more from every experiment, by extracting multiple results from one sample, saving time, money, and cells. To find out more information or to get in touch with us, please visit our website, phiab.com, and follow us on social media to always stay up to date. And with that, thank you for listening today. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you for the really <laughs> educational and inspiring uh, presentation. And then um, thanks for sharing your, sharing your knowledge on how to perform wood healing assays non invasively and how the monitor lifestyle imaging can help you to achieve other biologically and uh, relevant data. So uh, uh, before, yeah, you actually have all the camera and the mic on, so we can jump into the Q&A session. We got a lot of questions, so due to the time, <laughs> we unfortunately we cannot answer all of them, but don't worry. All your questions will be answered by our speakers at end or after the event. Uh, so uh, let's start with uh, Peggy. So first questions. Sometimes uh, the cells tend to climb at edge of the ABD culture insert. So how can I avoid this? Mm -hmm. um, it's often the case when they're too confluent, so that they really, um, especially with tumor cells, they tend to stack on each other and then the stick might stick to the silicone as well. I would recommend to seed less cells or reduce the time, culture time, until they are confluent. Yeah, this will make it 90% confluence then. 
Okay. Yeah. That I think that sounds really easy to solve that problem. And next quest next question for Lisa. Uh, how large is the area that can be imaged with Holo Monitor? Mm -hmm. the, yeah. Oh, that's a that's a good question. Uh, how large is the area that can be imaged? Uh, the field of view of Holo Monitor is about 550 times 550 uh, micrometers, and you can set up multiple positions within one well. Uh, and sort of also across the whole plate. So therefore you are able to run like multi-well um, time lapses in your standard plates. Mm -hmm. And speaking of plates, as I said, it's the EB uh, 35 millimeter micro dish high, right? Mm -hmm. And the yes, 24 um, well uh, micro plate. Um, besides those formats, we also do six well plate, 96 mm -hmm. well plate, and micro slides. So quite a quite a lot of different options. What area you would like to image? That's pretty amazing. <laughs> uh, we got another question. I think is really interesting, and uh, personally, I'm really curious as well. Uh, can the culture inserts, the EBD culture inserts, be used on the protein coated surface like nitrogen? Mm -hmm. uh, will the coating be disturbed when you pulling out the uh, culture insert? Mm -hmm. It's a good question. Um, most likely not. We tested it with several coatings like fibronectin or collagen and when you have um, coated the area what's most important is that you have to let it dry because the insert attached only to dry um, mm -hmm. surfaces. Mm -hmm. So let it dry and then um, when you seed it the cells and remove it again you still have the coating in the gap. Make some pre-tests. For example, Matrija, we haven't tested specifically, but chances are very high. But make some pre-tests, maybe with an antibody against a protein in Matrija or against the protein that you use as a coating. Check if it's still attached, and then you can run your experiments and be safe and know that the protein's still attached in the gap. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's pretty. I think everything with the this culture is so straightforward and easy to use. It's like you just know from there. Yeah, uh, the next question I think um, personally I'm also really interested as well. So you mentioned that you, you can measure 30 micro uh, morphology parameters. So where can I find those uh, parameters that you mentioned? Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks for that question. Yeah, I know I just mentioned 30. Um, <laughs> so uh, the like I can say like the five most common um, being used is area, volume, thickness of the cell, roughness of the cell, and texture. Um, but there are many parameters as well which are unique to um, digital holography. Um, and I think what's interesting here is that with those 30 parameters, um, ba or based on this sort of kinetic morphology uh, measurements, you can actually study like more things like the cell cycle. Um, you can also study cytotoxicity, um, cell death, mm -hmm. and you're actually also able to detect um, early signs from drug responses before actually the cell death occurs. Mm -hmm. um, so we actually have a webinar on, on that topic as well. So if you want to uh, I need to watch. Um, but there's a lot of morphology <laughs> parameters to study. Yeah, so yeah. is just the magic uh, number. Uh, yeah, that actually, I got one more question. Uh, well, I will actually have time for two more questions. So one is uh, for Peggy again. How can the culture insert mimic a psychological wound without causing cell damage? And also, they ask, can we reuse the EBD cell inserts? So actually, <laughs> okay, two, two, one. one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, two from one. <laughs> uh, the first question, yeah, it's a good one. We get it uh, relatively often. What I usually say on that is wound healing is a very complex phenomenon. I mean, there are many cell types involved in it. Uh, there's information going on. So using migration as a scratch as a no matter what you use, is just one tiny parameter of the whole process of wound healing. And when studying this as a model, using it as a model, you might consider what gives you the most reliable data and the most standardized setup in my personal opinion, not just because I work at EVD, is to use something that gives you a defined space that divides two cell populations or more to mm -hmm. get reliable data from that. Yeah, always the same size. That's it. And the last next question was reuse, right? Yes. Um, our inserts are made from silicone. It is autoclavable, but 
you cannot well it has a sticky underside and yes it might stick for a longer period of time but what you always need to consider is when you fill no matter if it's silicone or a dish or whatever with cell culture medium there are proteins in it and proteins stick to anything mm. even silicone so when we using it you will have those proteins from the previous experiments still stuck to it and they might influence your experiments in some way and yeah, that's really fair so point. I wouldn't make a point mm. that, that yeah yeah thanks yeah, thanks for the answer. I uh, have one last uh, question that's really general as well. What cell types can you imagine? Is that with? for me? <laughs> yeah, for you. Yeah, sorry. It's for Lisa. So what cell types can you image with uh, the uh, Holly monitor? Mm, the cell types question, yeah. Um, so Holly monitor is designed for adherent monolayer cell cultures. Uh, that's what it's best at. So as an example, you have different um, cancer cell lines. Um, as an example, uh, MDA and B231. Um, the videos I've showed, uh, that was the L929 mouse fiber rust cells. Um, but it's because it's non-invasive, um, many people use it for stem cells, uh, primary mm -hmm. cells. Um, we have a publication uh, page on our website where you can browse for the cell lines. So if, but if you don't find your cell line there, you can always contact us, I guess. <laughs> yeah. We'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I think that will be all for the question Q and Q&A session. And if your answer are not answered, well, if your question are not answered, our speaker will answer your question uh, after the event. So don't worry, your, your question will be answered. So at the end, uh, I would like to thank Lisa and Peggy again for this really inspiring educational presentation and we learn a lot from this uh, two presentations so for our audience please don't forget that you have uh, you have free uh, handouts all of free uh, handouts that you can download and don't forget to fill up the surveys so thank you so much for attending this <laughs> webinar and then um, i wish everybody a great day and take care see you next time bye, bye. bye. thanks for listening bye. Bye. <laughs>